Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the five, the top five cheapest combos. Cheap, not in terms of mana cost, but in terms of money in modern that do not see play. So we have Umbra Mantle, which is very good for combos because anytime you can untap something, that's going to be a powerful mechanic. And we have a joiner. And Joiner is two and a green. It is a common, very, very inexpensive. Tap it, add a amount of green to your mana pool equal to Joiner's power. It's a one, two. But with the mantle on it, the mantle is interesting because you can equip it for zero. Meaning, as soon as you play the mantle out, you can equip it to the Joiner and go to town. So equipped creature has free untap it. Target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Then what you would be doing is you would actually be using the joiner to untap itself, then tap itself for more mana and then untap itself. And then eventually you have infinite mana and you have an infinitely powered joiner, which can attack assuming you played it the turn previous to equipping mantle. One of the benefits of this is the mantle equipment is zero. So it's a very fast mechanic. If your opponent is tapped out and they don't have a creature, you just win the game outright. But if they are not tapped out, you have infinite mana and an infinite powered creature they need to deal with. So overall, a very strong card, a very strong combo, very inexpensive to build. You have an uncommon and you have a common. So one of the reasons it does not see play, it tends to rely heavily on these two cards. And these two cards as individual cards are not strong on them by themselves. Unlike something like Malera, who is always very good against poison. So next we have Pili Pala, and this is one of my favorite cards that doesn't see any play, which is a common, and Grand Architect, which is a rare from, I believe, Scars of Meriden. So let's start with Pilly Pala. Again, anything that can untap itself is very good. It's two, flying, two untap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. It is a one, one. Now Grand Architect can make blue creatures. Other blue creatures you control get plus one, plus one. It's kind of nice, not too relevant. A blue target artifact creature becomes, a, becomes blue until end of turn. You do have to activate it on. And you can tap an untapped blue creature you control to add two to your mana pool. So let's see what's going to happen here. Oh, and the two can, you have to spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts, which Pele Pala is. So when you have, when you make the Pele Pala blue, it can tap itself for two mana. Then using the two mana, untap itself, creating one mana of any color. Therefore, you have infinite mana and you have an engine, which is just untapping itself. Again, you can get this combo off relatively fast. It's not like the casting cost is ridiculous. Just like the previous combo, you are you can be blown out by artifact removal or creature removal, which is lightning bolts will get you. Overall, a very interesting combo and a very cheap one to make. I am surprised that no one is making these decks because at the very least, it'll be a tier four fun deck. I think casual players would want to play their own version of modern. It's just really fun when you have infinite mana, right? It's kind of like an EDH, but these cards are playable and modern as well. So moving on to our next combo that has not seen much modern play or any, Dust Mantle Guildmaids and Minecrank. So one of my favorite combos, um, it, anytime you can involve artifacts, that's good because you don't have to worry about getting the right colors necessarily. Dust Mantle Guildmates is blue and a black. The relevant ability here is the one and a blue and a black. Whenever a card is put into opponent's graveyard from anywhere this turn, that player loses one life. Mind Crank is two, it's uncommon. This is again, two uncommons, really cheap to make. If you're just interested in making good ED8 stacks, maybe you can just make using these cards. Whenever an opponent loses life, that player puts that many cards from the top of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So let's reiterate what's going on here. 
as long as you can start the mechanic and luckily the guildmates has the second ability which if you have trouble sending a card to your opponent's graveyard from anywhere you can trigger the second ability so what's going to happen is you are going to send a card you're going to send a card from your opponent's wherever to your graveyard player's going to lose one life mind cranks it whenever the opponent loses a life or loses life that player puts one more card from the top of his library into his graveyard which then will trigger the life loss ability again and then that will trigger the discard ability and it you kind of see where it's going so it's an automatic win and it's a known it's a very good combo in ed8 i do play it as a win condition but it's very easy to see coming from ed8s however in modern maybe they're not ready for this again you have a creature and you have an artifact so you are subject to both types of removal making it a little more fragile than if you know they were both creatures or something like that next we have two creatures now i do want to say there is another combo using niz mizzet and curiosity this same combo i'm just using tandem outlook so niz mizzet is six he is incredibly cheap i believe he was reprinted in a dual deck and that's why legendary creature flying whenever it, you draw a card it deals one damage to target creature or player you can trigger drawing a card from it now tandem outlook says soul bound uh, you may pair this creature with another unpaired creature and you're going to pair it with the niz miss it as long as tangent outlook is paired with another creature each creature each of those creatures has whenever this creature deals damage to an opponent draw a card but whenever you draw a card you deal damage you see what's going on here, right? I like the combo. The problem is Niz Mizzet is six mana. So six is a lot to ask for in modern. It is, you know, you can, in combos, you're looking for redundancy and there is a redundant card in Curiosity, which makes it so that you can either get Tandem out, Tandem Lookout or Curiosity and they will both allow you to combo out However, Niz Mizzet being a six mana dragon does not help the situation very much. Now, I like this combo. It's a lot of fun in mediates. Niz Mizzet has other potential there. And drawing cards is never bad anyway. But you draw infinite amount of cards and you deal infinite amount of damage to your opponents. Uh, very fun. And one of the things that I would love to make a deck with, you just have to... I feel like the deck will look like a hard counter, a draw go deck, which they have made much weaker recently. And you get to six, you put the curiosity on, you win the game from there. You do probably need some mana acceleration. Now the last combo, which is good, but not good enough to make, make a modern deck. I love my little mirrors. And here's a combo. You do need two mirror galvanizers but here's kind of nice because you have artifacts and artifacts are relatively easy to look for and manipulate. So you have a palladium mirror and you have two mirror galvanizers. And the mirror galvanizer reads one untap each other mirror you control, including perhaps another mirror galvanizer. And every time you untap it, your palladium mirror, which can produce two, pretty much just generates infinite amount of generic mana or i guess they call it colorless mana now so this is my favorite combo because it's it can be played in any deck you the weakness of this combo is that you need two galvanizers and it's very hard to get two of the same card when you're talking about combo decks you really want to talk about redundancy but not redundancy in the same card you want like this different cards to do the same mechanic so those are my top five combos in modern that I believe are very cool combos and interactions and incredibly cheap. Again, most of these are just uncommons and commons and even the rares like Niz Miss It, that's not expensive. Uh, Grand Architect's not that expensive. So at the very least, you can throw these into an ED8 stack. I mean, you can't put the Galvanizers in an ED8 stack, but you can put the other combos, the other four. And you can experiment with a tier four modern deck uh, because they are very color friendly they are very budget friendly and 
I would love to see one of them dominate in FNM or a smaller event because I believe they can. And at the very least, if you're just playing to combo off, you should be able to in four matches do that. So anyway, leave me a combo below if I missed any of the better combos that are good, cheap combos budget-wise, but not currently played and modern. Bye, guys.